Case Free, the boogeyman to many, landing at night or poor weather on the back of a boat. This video is aircraft agnostic, you'll need to be familiar with your radio, TACAN, ILS and optionally the ACLS system on your aircraft of choice and of course the DCS supercarrier. The frequencies needed should be provided by the mission maker. Case Free takes effect when visibility is below 5 miles or the cloud ceiling is below 1000 foot or at night. As you approach 50 miles it's time to start thinking about getting in touch with mother via the radio menu. Marshall 306, March Mops 087445, Angels 25, State 7.1. So let's break it down. We contact the Marshall and provide our aircraft number, 306. The heading from the carrier to us, and the distance, our altitude, and fuel state. If you're flying in an element, you'll also list off the numbers of your wingmen that you're holding hands with, and the lowest fuel state of the group. The important bit here is that you remember your aircraft number, but hopefully you already knew that, as all communications will be addressed to your aircraft's number going forward. Let's hear the response. All right, a lot to digest there. So we have who the message is addressed to, which is our aircraft number, Lone Warrior, the call sign of the carrier marshal we contacted, next the recovery type, case 3, and the approach type, CV-1. Only CV-1 approaches are simulated, so we'll only cover this. Next, the final bearing, 346, the heading we should expect to be landing on. Altimeter setting, which you should double check versus your own, and correct if needed. And from here, the marshal will list off instructions for each aircraft in our group. So our number once more, and this is the most important bit. We are asked to set up on the 166 radial from mother at 23 DME, the distance measuring equipment, in this case our TACAN radio. Our assigned altitude, Angels 8, and our expected push time. 48 minutes past. Then we read back our instructions to confirm. 306, Marshal on the 166, 23 DME, Angels 8. Expected approach time is 48. 306, read back correct. You'll need to either write this down or memorize those details. The 166 radial, 23 DME, Angels 8, 48 minutes past. If at any point you forget this, you can grab them from the message history on the pause menu. Now let's draw out and explain the pattern. So, we are to set up on the 166 radial. This is away from the carrier, not us. And don't make the mistake of going to the opposite side either. Our pattern leg should end at 23 nautical miles behind the carrier. By this point we turn around and perform an orbit. This is also the exact point we need to be at 48 minutes past to begin our landing you would typically hold a racetrack pattern with legs of about 10 miles. But we still need to get there. You should be aware that typically there will be a tanker around 4,000 feet orbiting the carrier, and the area behind the boat is restricted airspace. You must enter into this zone at your assigned altitude before you get there. You are expected to join the pattern from a distance greater than your DME given. Other aircraft will of course be sent into the pattern and stack up with separation, making this potentially a very busy bit of sky. Outside of that, you're free to manoeuvre as required. If you find yourself with a long wait, it's perfectly reasonable to stay at high altitude outside the Marshall stack until closer to time, to save yourself fuel, otherwise you can go direct to pattern. We'll use our TACAN and course selector to navigate to our starting point. This is also a good time to lower your hook and set the radar altimeter alert to 5000 feet and configure the ILS. Once we're within the assigned pattern, it's time to report that we are established. Giving number, established, and our altitude, and an update to our fuel state. 306, established angels, state 6.3. Now it's as simple as flying in circles until our push time, and this is the tricky part. 
Typically you'll perform a 10 mile racetrack orbit, but essentially you can do whatever is required to ensure that you are at the required distance, 23 DME, at the requested push time, 48, so long as you keep it safe and stay on your assigned altitude. And this is where the maths comes in. The typical method for timekeeping I use is to fly at 300 knots ground speed. This gives us a speed of 5 miles per minute of flight. A 30 degree bank turn results in about 90 seconds per 180 degrees of turn, to which we can use this to map out our arrival time. We established on the DME at roughly 42 pass, so we have 6 minutes to kill. 3 minutes will be spent turning around in total, leaving us 3 minutes and 15 miles to cover. So we should be able to travel 7.5 miles out, turn around, and we should be roughly on time. Similarly, you could use this information to calculate when you'll make it back to the DME. We can further sanity check our maths as we get closer, by 1 minute 2 we should be 5 nautical miles away and 30 seconds, 2.5 miles away. Here we can correct for small errors in timing by simply doing whatever it takes to arrive on time, be it slowing down, S-curves, or speeding up. You're in a fighter jet, so just make it happen, whilst staying on your altitude. You want to hit that DME at the push time, the closer, the better. There will be no call on the radio, it's on us to report that we are commencing. 306, commencing, state 5.7, altimeter 29.93. We're once more given the final bearing, 346, and asked to check in with approach. No radio changes are needed in DCS, so this is just radio menu work. We'll input the new final bearing into our course for reference. As we're doing this, we're maintaining a 4,000 foot per minute descent and trying to hold 250 knots. As we pass 5,000 foot, we need to make a platform call and slow the descent rate to 2,000 foot per minute. Your radout, if set earlier, will go off to remind you. If you haven't already, now's the time to start turning to intercept the final bearing ready for landing. Level off at 1,200 feet, still maintaining 250 knots. If you're going too fast or too slow, you're going to interrupt the correct spacing set by the push time, so it's crucial you maintain it. Now we've just got a straight shot into land. By this point you should be following the ILS needles to keep us on course, holding 250 knots and 1200 feet until you hear radar contact 8 miles. At which point we've got to slow down, drop flaps and gear, and get on speed for landing. By 6 miles we should be set up with our ILS giving us 4 needles. We get a quick check in but still need to maintain that 1200 feet until the needles come down to meet us, after which we'll maintain the glide slope. If you're using the ACLS, now's the time to start handing over. As you approach, reference the long range lineup light on the rear of the boat. Getting a steady yellow light indicates we're aligned with the runway. A red and we're on the left, a green, and we're on the right of lineup. Flashing indicates the severity of error, flashing faster the further off we are. Keep on the ILS guidance until you see the meatball, and like normal, call it in, maintain the ball, all the way to the deck. Once landed, lights off and quickly make your way to parking. Now, since DCS lacks plane directors at the moment, I won't fault you for using MVGs or lights to help you find your way. But generally, lights are only used on the deck to indicate a launch in the place of a salute, or to alert the crew that you have a malfunction. So there you have it, safe and sound. Remember to trust the ILS and use the meatball once visible. Your eyes will want to deceive you, correct mistakes early, and make smooth corrections. DCS doesn't simulate the bolter pattern, but quickly said you would maintain final bearing, climb up to 1,200 feet, gear up, flaps off, and maintain 150 knots. At 4 miles, turn left 180 degrees. By 4 miles behind the carrier, you can again rejoin the pattern if it is clear. Otherwise, you may need to start the process anew, especially on busy nights as the ATC cannot handle bolters presently. 
Remember, the AI can and will crash into you or land on top without regard for safety if you get the timings and speeds wrong. So to avoid a frustrating end to a flight, it's best to adhere to the case free approach. Case free is a crucial skill for many campaigns, and as an added bonus, you now know how to perform a case two approach for mild weather, which is to fly a case free procedure until you reach 10 nautical miles, after which you convert to a standard case one landing. So that was quite a lot to take in. Broken down, the crucial information is as follows. Note your radial from mother, DME, altitude and push time. Get into your pattern, 300 knots ground speed, 5 miles a minute, 90 seconds per 180 degree turn. Calculate your arrival at the DME and push to meet it. Commence 4,000 foot per minute descent to 5,000 foot. Call platform 2,000 foot per minute descent to 1,200. Dirty up for landing at radar contact 8 miles. And allow the needles to intercept and then land. With a little practice, this is not too much to handle, becoming a strangely zen and rewarding experience when you get it just right. A rather undramatic test of your flying precision, but an important one nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed, and take care.